Hey, welcome to another outstanding edition of Western Alaskan Bachelor somewhere on the southern Kenai Peninsula near the town of Homer. Today we're going to talk about the technical aspects of what it took to put together a system and uh, details that you can use on your own, why we chose the system that we did. Um, essentially, the mechanical and infrastructure side of our system is loosely modeled after the growing power system, but kind of adapted for our uh, seismic environment, as it were, and some other considerations as well. So essentially what we have is running bed system. The beds are approximately three feet wide. You can make them as long as you want. In retrospect, I would not encourage anyone to make beds that turn around a corner. I would go with straight beds that are a straight run, and if necessary, uh, turn the corner with separate seams of EPDM fabric or whatever liner that you use. Use whole sheets, avoid seaming the EPDM if that's at all possible. I'm gonna have you look up under here where you can kind of get a feel for the construction. Basically, we used half inch plywood for the bottoms. That plywood is supported apart by about one foot on center two by eights. These two by eights are secured to end wall two by eights. Probably helps if you get farther back to kind of look at the whole system. These two by eights are secured to end plate two by eights via Simpson ties. Simpson ties are things that you can find at a local Home Depot or hardware store. It's basically just a metal uh, piece that helps to join two pieces of wood together better. A lot of people call them hurricane ties. Uh, they really revolutionized uh, construction and environments subject to high wind loads and seismic loads. So anyway, you have the two two by eights here in the middle, and then right at the edge or along the edge, we have two by fours. And then above that, you have your five eighths marine grade plywood here. Above that, these are your walls for the side of your growing bed that hold the media in, water in, things like that. And these are two by sixes. Down here on the bottom, we're using two by eights again. Now the whole thing, other than the Tico nails, Tico nails are what you use to hold together Simpson ties, the whole thing is put together with screws. And that's because, God damn it, I like to be able to take things apart once I put them together, and I also like screws at last. So the last screw you'll ever use is called a torque screw or a star drive screw. Now, old Mr. Phillips Head thought it was pretty snazzy when he came along and put old Mr. Flathead out of business. But Mr. Star Drive has eons and light years beyond Mr. Phillips and Mr. Flathead when it comes to screw technology. These screws are awesome. You can drive them into ice, rotting material, anything, come back covered in dirt 10 years later, pull them out. They're amazing screws. Anyway, virtually the entire system is put together uh, with torque screws other than the nails. Now the weight is transferred back, our runs, plywood comes in four by eight sheets for most people. Uh, four by eight foot sheets. So each run is basically eight feet from the center of a supporting member to the center of another supporting member. Um, so you can see the joists, which are essentially the two by fours and the two by eights with plywood on top, transfer that load out to your four by fours. The 4x4s, because these are heavy structural members subject to moisture, saturation, uh, soil contact, these are treated wood. Um, unless you use cedar or some other structural wood that, that is specifically designed for below grade installations or applications, you need to account for that. So for us, it's treated wood. Uh, this is just a 4x4 four four treated wood. And as you can see, this 4x4 four four is secured to the horizontal cross base 2x8s uh, with the infamous and illustrious star drive screws. We're getting ready here for structural reasons. I wanted to see if it will hold, but we'll also bolt. The reason we don't have a screw here is we're gonna bolt, through bolt, through the vertical four by four and through this uh, at all our cross bracing members, just to add another element of stoutness and to, to help out in case of an earthquake. Up top, and you can see we have some two by fours and basically off of our two by fours, we suspend almost all of our lighting, run our, uh, run our electrical cords, everything like that. One thing that we have really found that, and fallen in love with is our lighting, most of it is suspended with these really, really handy uh, light chains that are ratcheting and adjustable. Uh, you can find them on Amazon Prime for like 11 bucks a pair. Well worth the investment. 
Uh, they're going to be far handier, far more useful than most of what you're going to make on your own. As you can see, all of our lighting uh, is uh, T5 high efficiency fluorescent bulbs or uh, LEDs. And uh, we, now that we've kind of had experience with a couple different T5 fluorescent bulb fixtures, we really like uh, the ones that are daisy chainable. And we stick with the four foot length bulbs, eight foot in, or uh, six bulbs in each array. The four foot length T5 bulbs are ubiquitous. You can buy them everywhere online, hydroponic stores. Uh, go and find your friendly local high grade marijuana growing supplier and they'll tell you all about T5 bulbs and all the other kinds of bulbs you can use. Now, overall the framework, we have EPDM pond liner. This is 45 mil fish safe EPDM pond liner. Uh, all the tests show, obviously anytime you have some sort of petroleum product that's plasticized, it's going to leach a certain amount of nasty stuff that give your babies extra heads and, you know, make one of your boobs lopsided and whatnot. Um, but basically EPDM has been found by the NSF to have some of the lower leaching rates of similar materials, far better than PVC, uh, specifically far better uh, than materials that are exposed to UV. Uh, situations. If you have an aquaponics setup outside, you really need to avoid PVC. It's not UV stabilized and a lot of BPAs and um, other uh, things are going to leach into your food and water if you, uh, if you expose PVC to any sort of temperature fluctuation or UV. But under our EPDM waterproof pond liner, again that's 45 mil fish safe, food safe EPDM pond liner, we have what's called a pond liner underlayment um, or a pond liner fabric and basically this is designed to keep the pond liner from rubbing against stuff and having a hole torn in it. Uh, save yourself a bunch of money. You don't need to buy this from a pond manufacturer. You can go to a bulk landscaping supplies company or a hardware store and just get a drain felt or drain fabric. Don't get Geotex Typar but drain felt or drain fabric is essentially the same thing as this pond liner underlayment costs about half the price. As we come around our system, so the same joisting pattern that we use is supported throughout the whole thing. All of our plumbing, we like the idea of standardized plumbing, all of our pressurized plumbing is three quarter inch PVC. Uh, the literature that we read told us that basically anything smaller than half inch uh, really doesn't give you good surface area ratios and the algae and things growing on the inside can, can create clogging problems. The next step up is three quarter inch PVC. Again, it's ubiquitous. You can find all the fittings at Home Depot. They're cheap, and unless you're moving more than 1,500 gallons per hour through the line, uh, most pumps are gonna be easily adaptable to three quarter inch PVC. Again, that's Schedule 80, three quarter inch PVC. Um, again, pretty good. You could also use PEX if you wanted something that was still food safe. Um, we use PVC because we don't have any UV issues, it's an indoor system, but if it was outdoor, I'd probably use CPVC, PEX, or something that was a little u more UV stabilized. And again, uh, after you first put this in, use glue on your system, everything like that. Make sure the glue that you use is food safe, it's NSF certified, food safe, or potable water safe, PVC glue and primer, and that the PVC you buy is certified for the same thing. A lot of PVC glues are not fish safe or food safe. Uh, for all of our outflows, we use 2 inch PVC and uh, one very handy aspect that we've noticed for connecting, cleaning, everything else, a lot of our PVC fittings we glue, but in order to quickly attach and detach things, it's very handy to use these screw-on fittings or these pressure compression fittings. So basically what this allows you to do is have a PVC fitting that you can easily take apart, unhook, there's a little uh, rubber gasket in there to kind of help with pressurizing, but I can take this pump out, clean it, mess with it, and not have to undo or slice up any of my PVC. And I guarantee you, you will be cleaning your pumps and uh, your system frequently. So anything that makes that job simpler, easier, well worth the cost of, a, of an extra fitting. Now I'll come back to this and fix this later. One thing we do notice, whatever pump you use, you're going to end up cleaning the filter an awful lot. So it might be worth uh, getting investing in larger filters with a larger surface area. Also might be a good idea to invest in filter bags to envelop your entire pump in. Because we find that we have to clean our pump filters just about every day or every other day. And if your filter starts to clog, your pump works harder, uh, your pump can 
um, break or burn itself up. It's a really good idea to invest in pumps that have an automatic overheating shutoff so that your pump doesn't destroy itself um, at first glance. We also use a lot of thermometers in here. Um, it's a good idea to have thermometers at different elevations throughout the room. Just monitor your temperature, uh, airflow, things like that. Let's see, what else do we learn? Oh yeah, um, we've brought all of our electrical uh, stuff. This whole room is, is GFCI hardened, but water and electricity often don't mix very well, especially if you have a system that's exposed to pets or children. So make sure that if you don't have access to GFCI electrical connections or you're maybe doing this in an older house or a garage or a shop or a studio, make sure that you use surge protectors and electrical extension cords that maybe have GFCI, that's down to ground fault circuit interrupt, uh, uh, little fuses built in. Uh, just to help prevent you from electrocuting yourself while you're playing in your aquaponics system. Over in our system we have functional redundancy. I've gone over this in other videos. But basically there are two pumps. Water comes up from each pump. Most of that water gets circulated through the filter above the fish tank. The filter again, pretty simple construction. Mostly perlite, pea gravel, three quarter inch. But it's also worth noting that this bucket is made out of food grade material. A lot of buckets that you're gonna find in the hardware store are not designed to have potable water or food in them. So make sure whatever buckets, plastics, pond liners, anything that's gonna be sitting in your system, make sure that it's something that you can eat off of and it's clean. Make sure to wash it and clean it well before you put it in your system or expose your fish to it. And then just a little bit of the trickle of water, the functional redundancy. Each pump has a line, a splitter down here, and then a little bit comes up and flows through the system. Something else that's worth noting, uh, if we come over here and look at our hose, when we add more water to the system, we use a chlorine filter. These you can buy online, Amazon Prime, wherever, any gardening supply store for anywhere from 30 to 50 bucks. This is good for 20,000 gallons. And that removes about 85% of the chlorine from the water before it goes in our system. Now the backbone of our aquaponics system is microbes. And chlorine is specifically designed and put into water, most municipal water supplies, to kill microbes. So we want to take that out. Otherwise, every time we add new water to our system, we're pushing the reset button and killing all of our hard work in developing the right microbe ecology. This is another system here. You can see we're gonna try this soon. This is slightly wider, but the same basic joist patterning. One foot on center. Again, we use one foot on centers, 16 inches on center or 24 inches on center when we're framing because plywood comes in nominal dimensions of four feet by eight feet. So again, one foot on center here just to be super beefy. Uh, I would recommend also building in a room that has a floor drain um, you're going to inevitably have your tanks overfill, your pump accidentally pump water out of one tank. So lots and lots of things like that to consider. I'm sure I'll think of more things after this video, but I just wanted to give everyone a good basic start of what it takes to make the system. Little tricks like torque screws make all the difference. Um, and if you have any questions about other details, feel free to post them uh, with this video. Thanks so much for watching.